as strengthening a relationship. But this is really only mathematically true, not conceptually. Statistically, a suppressor can be defined as any variable that explains a significant portion of a dependent variable, revealing its relationship with the original independent variable. But if you're like most people, what I just said doesn't make a whole lot of sense in real life, just to statisticians. So let me give you an example. We are going to say that once again, we have a whole sample of people who received this awesomest of awesome guitar, and we would expect from what we've learned that getting the guitar should result in lots of practice, signing a huge contract, and becoming a huge star. I'm kind of a big deal. However, to our surprise, we ran a correlation, and we found that getting a guitar is not necessarily related to getting a huge contract. Now you may be feeling stumped. What's going on? I thought one led to the other. Well, perhaps later that night you are watching The Daily Show and good old Jon Stewart brings you some news. Studies are now showing that individuals who prefer Conan O'Brien more than Jay Leno Thank tend to, much. on average, be more likely to sign high dollar record deals. Hmm. Could this be affecting your results? You can probably guess that since I brought it up, that it did. But how? Like this. Because respondents who preferred Conan tended to have a higher likelihood of record deal, regardless of whether they got a guitar, even more likely than respondents who preferred Jay and got a guitar, that made the relationship between getting a guitar and making the dollars not as clear. However, when you controlled for differences in talk show host preference, you see that the correlation between the guitar and the contract reappears. Let's try to clarify this a little more. So as we said before, we have two groups, those that did not in the no column and those that did receive a Les Paul in the yes column. We also have on the y-axis uh, their likelihood to receive a record contract. So as we said at the beginning of this example, uh, we don't have a significant link between receiving that guitar and getting that record contract, which is why you see the non-significant slope, although slightly positive, slightly more likely if you got the guitar, but as you can see, it's not significant. Next, we surveyed each participant to ask who they preferred, Jay Leno or Conan O'Brien. We plotted the response on the scatter plot shown. And results indicated that John Stewart was in fact correct. Individuals who preferred Conan were indeed more likely to receive a record contract than respondents that preferred Jay Leno. Not surprising because Conan is awesome. Thank you very much. Now, it is particularly important to see that this was true regardless of whether or not you received a guitar. So, individuals' differences on likelihood of contract was spread at both no and yes for guitar based on whether they preferred J or Conan. And the spread between these two categories and across host preference makes any possible link between getting a guitar and higher likelihood for contract difficult to detect. However, if we control for these differences based on host preference, the once non-significant relationship will become significant, as you see, and the expected link between getting a guitar and having a higher likelihood of signing a record deal will show through. One last note about a suppressor. Adding a suppressor to your model unfortunately will not magically give you significance in all cases. A significant effect will only emerge if one truly exists that's being covered up by a suppressor. When no underlying effect truly exists, controlling for the effects of suppressors will not change the significance of your relationship. As you can see, when the effects of a potential suppressor are controlled for on a non-significant relationship, the group differences disappear, but the graph simply just shifts 
and condenses, but the strength of the association does not change. Now at this point you may be thinking, didn't you say the relationship strengthens? Doesn't strengthen mean change, and doesn't change mean a moderator? Well, if you thought that, you'd be correct. But let me show you some subtle distinctions between the two. Let's say, for example, that the gap between Conan supporters and Jay Leno supporters for likelihood of receiving a large record contract was not equal between the did not receive a Les Paul and received Les Paul group. But instead, let's say the gap was actually wider for respondents that did receive a Les Paul. In that case, we actually have a moderating effect as the host preference, Conan versus J, is interacting with the Les Paul status or whether you received a Les Paul. And so there's actually an interaction or moderator effect between preference on host and on guitar status. So it could be said that when A does not equal B, in this case A and B equaling slopes, you have a significant moderator. Now knowing the difference between mediators, moderators, and suppressors is only the first step. The next step is testing for them. Now that's beyond the scope of this video, but uh, you can find some helpful resources on my website, which if you're watching on YouTube, you can find to the right, right there. Or if you are on our site already, you can also find below. Also, remember to check out our Tumblr, Facebook, and Twitter pages below, right there. And thank you for watching. Uh, feel, free, feel free to leave any comments at our website uh, at www.varyyourstats.com. Shoot us a message or email and let us know if we can be of help any further.